Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. And now, celebrating 15 years of broadcasting, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Whether you're tuning in on the radio dial in my home state of Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM, we welcome you all back to our show. Also, those tuning in through our online affiliates around the world, including our iHeart Radio family. We're glad to have all of you with us as well. I'm excited to welcome our next guest to the program. James LaRosa is making his first appearance on Conversations Live. He's an individual that many of us have gotten to know because of the work he's been able to create. James is the creator and producer of the hit show, Hit the Floor, that's getting ready for its fourth season to premiere on BET on Tuesday, July the 10th. We're going to talk to James not only about the creation of this show, but the, the themes he's been able to tackle, what it's been like for him to see the response, especially on social media, to hit the floor, and also maybe what we can expect for season four. James, hello to you, and welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Excited to hey, talk the about the show definitely again. Mine. <laughs> Hey, yeah, you know what? I, this has been something I've been looking forward to for quite some time. Uh, James, I want to go back, though, to how this all began for us, at least. I mean, it was 2013, ironically, in the month of May, um, that hit the floor first premiered. I mean, could you have imagined five years ago, James, that, that this show that you created and these themes that you created would kind of take over television the way they did? Um, <laughs> no, actually, we shot the pilot six years ago. It took us a little bit to get on the air uh, on VH1. It's been really um, phenomenal to watch uh, the, I, I, I want to call it the little show that could. We debuted, I think, pretty good. <laughs> so, right. Pretty well, I'm not sure I could say we're the little show, but we're certainly, uh, without a doubt, the show that the fans built. Um, when you When you have an idea for a show... You know, you can be excited about it. You can get a cast and crew together. It can be amazing, but you never know how it's going to be received. And, you know, like I said, we started out of the gate quite nicely. Um, But our first season, um, we had 10 episodes, and minus one episode, every single week we went up and up and up in the ratings because it was word of mouth. There was something that people were seeing that um, they were responding to. And there wasn't a lot like us on the air when we debuted, there wasn't a how to get away with murder. There wasn't an empire. Um, And so if you wanted your, your drama with a, with a cast that (laughs) actually possibly looked like you, uh, this was a place to go and and people really gravitated towards it. And it's been great. Right. You know, I'm so glad you said that James, I think not only a cast that, that looked like the audience, but I think that we're dealing with issues like the audience. I mean, because even from the very first couple of episodes, it's very clear that this is more than just a show about basketball, right? It's more than just a show about some cheerleaders. These are show about family, about friendships, betrayal. I mean, did you go into it knowing those layers were going to be so prominent? For sure. I think that um, <clears throat> that's how you get a good show. Um, I think when you heard about, you know, well, it's a show about uh, basketball, you know, dancers, cheerleaders, what have you, I think you you would have a preconceived notion about what that show would be. But we know we wanted to be right. um, bigger than that. We know we wanted to have, I mean, particularly because it's through the eyes, a lot of the shows through the female characters, we wanted to give them layers, we wanted to give them uh, struggles, and we also had to give them men who were formidable um, so that they themselves could be formidable. So, you know, we, we, there weren't, oddly enough, I talk about there weren't a lot of, I mean, there was no sports show. <laughs> there was no yeah. uh, one hour drama that centered around any sort of a sport um, that I know of. And actually, I think we even looked at what was on the air at the time, and there wasn't even a drama with 20 somethings. Like, it was just, it was a very sort of untapped audience. So because of that, we could get into all sorts of stories that were not only sports centered uh, or dance centered, but just sort of 20 something centered. Um, And uh, it it gave us a lot of opportunity to go places that other shows uh, weren't. Oh, hey, look, 
there's my phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the real love you live know what? podcasting. <laughs> right, exactly, right. I mean, but you know, I, I think too the other side of that is too, and you mentioned you know the word of mouth, and of course, I mean social media, right? I was one of those live tweeters, uh, like you know, I know people will be when the show returns for season four in July, who I mean, who could not wait to not only to talk about what was happening, but of course to have that interaction. I mean, did you know going in, James, that social media was going to be important for the cast and yourself to be involved in because that is where the audience was. I I think I was probably more ignorant of that, um, but in a good way. Um, When the show was cast, um, we all just genuinely liked each other and we genuinely bonded and we had fun. We, I mean, when we were filming the first season, no one knew what the show was or what it, the, what was coming, what have you. We were just having a really good time. And so that translated over to social where, you know, we had our little accounts and we were like interacting and just being fools. And I don't think we really were – you see now a lot of shows like, oh, okay, so if the cast talks to each other, this is good and we'll do this, we'll do that. We were just being goofy and being <laughs> with each other, gotcha. not thinking, oh, fans are going to follow us. They're going to follow all of us, and then they're going to not only see us interacting, but interact with us. And, you know, we've got a very humble uh, group of people that make the show, and nobody's like, oh, I'm only going to talk to my celeb friends on here. I mean, we just talk to anybody and everyone. It's a party, and I think that actually is what helped uh, us in the beginning you know, we, it's devil's nation. We, it helps to get people feeling like they're a part of it because they are. There's nothing sort of fabricated or manipulated about it. We just all have a good time together and we include everybody. Um, and I think right. actually because the show touches on different, not in a heavy-handed way, but we touch on a lot of different uh, types of people that everyone kind of is invited to the party. I mean, we have a multi-generational, we have people of different sexual orientations, we have different ethnicities, right? Like everybody, there's, there's, there's a lot of different kind of entry points. And so you get a lot of interesting and often just goofy conversation. Um, certainly VH1, right. you know, where we started had a super solid social media base and so i'm sure we're like uh this is great keep keep talking you guys <laughs> you know they they came out right. of the gates with a plan but i think because it's just a natural thing that was very inclusive i mean really that was a big part of our success i think right and it's a success that definitely has continued, and now we're going to see that, especially as Season 4 begins, James. I want to say for those who are just tuning in, he's on the radio side or online. You're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome James LaRosa to our program today. James is a creator and producer of the hit show on television called Hit the Floor. It's gearing up for Season 4, and we can already tell from even the previews that we've been able to see on social media, James, even a, a candid conversation that we were privy to, uh, thanks to Instagram with yourself and I think some of the other producers about you were willing just to go there, you know, for this next season, you know, how far can you take them? You know, and I talk to a lot of authors on this program and a lot of times it seems as though they, they put their characters in the most precarious situation possible to see how they're going to deal with it and how they're going to get out. Is that kind of one of the things that went into this season? I mean, seeing where you could take these characters next. Well, you know, we, when we finished season as a writer, always, and yes, um, when we finished season three and we're kind of hanging out, kind of going, you know, what's season four, where we, you know, what, <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? We had the numbers and we we're just kind of like, where's the real estate to put us? And then BET snatched us up and we're like, okay, we're going to go play over there now. Um, I think I personally had a lot of pent up, like, I miss these characters and I wanted to really, there there were opportunities here that, that I was appreciative of. And I'm like, well, let's just really twist and turn them. I also really, you know, have a strong relationship with the cast just as friends and 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 I love to challenge them in in ways that like I I'm I marvel at the stuff that they can do and I think they don't even know what they can do so in some ways so to be able to give them stories where they have to just break down or do this big comedy plot when all they're known for is breaking down I mean it's it's been great to not only twist and turn the characters but give the actors an opportunity and the one you know the the actors who are returning chose to they were like we miss hit the floor we want to be on hit the floor and we got um almost everybody back and they they they, i wanted to reward them and go you know we're back this is great now i'm gonna 
uh, I was going to swear. I'm not sure if I can swear on here, but I'll say we're going to mess your lives up a bit uh, and see how dirty we can uh, make things for you and your character. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's that's going to be the great thing to watch, and I definitely be one of those that will be tuning in. James, James, I have to tell you, you probably are not going to remember this, but this conversation that we're having today is actually four years in the making. I reached out to you back in 2014 on Twitter uh, or, originally, um, and, and it, I think it ended up just becoming a scheduling thing. We weren't able to get it. So when I reached out to you on Instagram this time, uh, you know, and we were able to reconnect, you know, and now of course to have this conversation, you know, it's a great thing uh, for our audience because I know we have a lot of our fans here, especially in my home state of Mississippi, that, that love this this show. I want to say, too, the other thing that I think people liked about Hit the Floor is that uh, it showed that if you worked hard, you know, if you were willing to put in that work, either – were you talking about the players that were on – you know the, the the you know the the stage as far as the basketball team or even the cheerleaders that that you could achieve your goals. I mean, has that been one of the things you've heard from the fans that it kind of even though they like the drama, they also like the fact that these are individuals who work to get to where they are. You, you we don't have that one character on the show who's impossibly beautiful and things just come their way. I mean. Sometimes you you achieve your goals in sometimes underhanded ways. I mean, you have the character of Yelena Howard who went from uh, dancer to owning the damn team, uh, and that right. took and that took a while. It took some elbow grease, um, and <clears throat> so having characters who uh, everyone has to have a goal, everyone has to have an ambition, and however they go about it, you definitely see them uh, either achieve and attain or get a new goal that sort of more closely aligns with who they really are as a person. Um, you will see in season four how how those goals kind of manifest or detour with characters like Jude or Lionel um, or Yelena or Ka- – I mean, they, you they're all hard workers, and you can see how they uh, – they don't rest. They don't. No one goes. Oh, hey, I just got this thing, and now I'm good. <laughs> I'm going right. to go to Maui. Right. Um, and that's behind the scenes as well. I mean, when we gathered the cast together in the first place, they came from different, L, different, different areas of like some were more sort of had more credits than others, and but everyone was just scrappy, and everyone just really wanted to put their best in, and and so I think that's another thing people see through social media is real people who you see them putting right. in the work. Our dancers are in those dance classes and sweating. They're not like in full makeup on their on their Tuesday doing like one little spin and off they go. I mean, you see our basketball players just drenched on the court working out. So it's I think that can be inspiring to see these people weren't just sort of bust in, had their face beat, put the hair in a, in a, <laughs> in a ponytail, and off they go. I mean, everybody scrounged, so character and actor. And I think that if people are inspired by that, I think that's great. Right. I, I definitely think they will be. The last question I want to ask you before we remind our audience how they can be able to watch season four and even catch up on the previous seasons, I noticed. I think the social media, that's available now. Uh, James, is this role for you? I mean, we don't always see the creator, executive producer out front. How how comfortable has this part been for you? I mean, we talked about social media earlier. You definitely have been really owning that as you're preparing for this next season. I mean, what has this been like for you, I mean, to kind of be out front and center, uh, not only, of course, reminding us about the premiere of season four, but also cheering on this this team that you've been able to create for this show. I think um, I don't really look at it in terms of like how comfortable I am or not. I sort of feel like I'm a parent, and yep. uh, if 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 my child is going to be seen, I have to sit there and whip out the, the <laughs> <laughs> take out my wallet and be like, "Look at my kid." <laughs> so I think as a result, that puts me. In places where uh, I, I guess you could say I'm, I'm front and center, but also a show like this. I mean, we have a very strange sort of producing producing schedule. We've had windows of time. We've you know where we haven't um, between seasons and things like that. I think in order for this show to have gotten to where it is, for it to have this life on BET. You can't have someone who's asleep at the wheel. You need someone who is going yeah. to keep pushing that boulder and keep showing that they believe in it and that people are here for it, and they are. So <clears throat> I would say it's out of necessity, um, but it's 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 hard to feel um, 
I don't say self-conscious, but I mean, if, if you believe in what you're doing and you're like having fun and you really are getting the opportunity to tell stories that you aren't really seeing other places, whether it's about gay characters or these kick-ass women who are just stopping at nothing, it's, it's, you know, it's, I don't really think about the <laughs> anything else besides getting out there and, like I said, sho- shoving it in people's faces and going, look at it, look at it. <laughs> right. Well, they will definitely be able to do just that. As I mentioned, Season 4 begins on BET Tuesday, July the 10th. That's at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. for our fans here on, uh, of course, Central Time in Mississippi. So make sure you guys do check your local listings for that. Also, if you need to catch up, um, one of the tweets that I saw, uh, James, in prepping for this segment is that Seasons 1 and 2 are hit the floor now available on demand on BET. So you all can be able to catch up uh, to kind of get ready uh, for the premiere coming up in July for sure. Also, if you're not doing so already, we definitely encourage you all to make sure you're following Hit the Floor all over social media, you can find them on Facebook, Instagram, as well as on Twitter. Uh, just search for Hit the Floor, and make sure you guys are using the hashtag Hit the Floor as well. Uh, James, I know that you will continue to be live tweeting, uh, of course, with the new season, as well as staying connected. So how can our audience stay connected with you? Uh, well, they can clearly Instagram is the better way to go than Twitter if you want to do interviews. I'm kidding. But, yeah, <laughs> it, it's James LaRosa uh, on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, and uh, I would say before uh, before I go, I have to – I think Kat Bayless would give me a, a, a stern talking to a – she's from Vicksburg, Mississippi. So for her, I will say hello oh, to wow. all the Mississippians. Uh, oh, and, wow. uh, oh, yeah, we made her character actually from Vicksburg. Uh, her accent just, I swooned for it. And uh, she's a wonderful ambassador for the state. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. Congratulations again to you, James, and to the entire cast and crew. And looking forward to the premiere on July the 10th. Thank you very much for having me. And we will see you all in July. Exactly. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. If you all came in late and missed part of the conversation with James, don't worry. Thanks to our online friends, you all can catch the replay right after we go off the air. The link is already available through our social media sites. So head over to Facebook.com slash Cyrus Webb or go to Twitter.com slash Cyrus Webb. If you click on the link there, you can listen to the show completely for free and share with your friends from there as well. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live today. You will make it a great one.